And that was given to me as a friend. And if you heard the story, this sort of showed up miraculously outside my door one day, three days after I prayed for something like, well, for, for this exact image. I didn't know that this image existed. And wow. my father was uh, a, a devotee of the Divine Mercy Novena. Uh, for many years and the um the image that i was familiar with was not this one it was one of the the later ones and um i, I wasn't really i'm also an artist i wasn't really um fond of the portrait you know um right. and i didn't know that existed and uh so i i prayed when i was living in my one bedroom apartment in queens one day that I, you know i was dealing with some personal issues and I wanted to explore the, the novena and the chaplet and I wanted to have an image to pray with um, and I, I just said to myself you know I wish that there was like an orthodox icon style or something right. that would be just a little icon that I could just hang in my little apartment that would be not too huge or giant or but just you know I, I don't even know if it exists but it, wouldn't it be nice if that was available and three days later this showed up outside my door outside my door there was a uh, a mail where the mailboxes for the building uh and people would leave stuff on top of the box that they want you know have a penny take a penny but like with books and cds and albums and VC vhs tapes at the time um and uh and whatever they didn't want uh, that other people might find use in uh, and so I looked, went outside and literally on top of them in the middle, but this was just sitting there. I said, okay, I guess that's mine. So, and I, I was just, I was so astounded because like I said, I had no idea that that even existed. No idea that that was a real thing. And, uh, and so that was the beginnings of, you know, uh, of, I think my, my real journey, um, to where I'm at now and where I continue to travel. And I told that story to um, the director of this production, this uh, traveling show about the life of St. Faustina. I told Leonardo Di Filippis that story, and he's like, yeah, when can you start? You know, it, right. was, there was, it was a no brainer for him. Prayer being earthly permission for heavenly interface and that, you know, God may have something planned for us, but we have to ask for it because we're given free will. So we have to ask for it in prayer for him to allow it to to come to us. If we don't, you know, um, or we don't acknowledge him or we disavow or we pretend he's not there. Well, it's, it's all this stuff is there for you. You just have to ask for it, which means acknowledgement and, you know, subverting your ego and, and you know, getting into a mindset of humility and uh, even this prayer hour for me every day it's uh, it's a, it's an exercise in humility because uh, right. you know um, I've never had so much trouble reading before <laughs> when I started this prayer hour I'm like what is going on here um, but uh, you know I, it's it's a reminder that uh, people I think it's I know that it's not about me, but I think it's maybe it's a reminder for everyone watching that are fans of the show that I'm not Jesus. I'm a clearly flawed human being, and here's proof. If you have a set of rosary beads, you can follow along, and if not, you can just listen, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, and meditate on the mystery of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. You expired, O oh Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O oh, fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O oh, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus is a fund of mercy for us. I trust in you. O oh, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. I trust in you. O oh, blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fountain of mercy for us. 
I trust in you. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm thinking. But it, in doing so, it also checks my ego very thoroughly, <laughs> which I am very grateful for. So. Reversion might be the wrong word. <coughs> Deeper conversion is a more accurate phrase. Uh, I think I was, I've all, you know, I've never really had a, there was never really a point in my life where I was disconnected from my faith. It might have been a little lukewarm, it might have been a little casual at times, but I've never been disconnected from it. God's been too prevalent in my life many occasions from as long as I can remember as early as I can remember even as a child it was probably about two years ago um, this May uh, where you know for a while I had just been struggling as a performer as an actor and, and in between agents and out here without agents you don't get auditions and you don't have an opportunity to work and do what you feel that you're brought out here to do and I had been out here already eight years and I had a few jobs but it was just you know one thing after the other and and, and lots of time in between jobs and uh, I was juggling probably six or seven different side hustles um, simultaneously and when I focused on any of them to try to get more of them to, to get more work to sustain myself to make more money n nothing would happen like I couldn't make more money like no matter how many, it's like, it seemed like the more jobs I had, the less money I made, which I just didn't understand. And I got to the point where I, I literally was on my knees. I had a month's worth of bills that were starting to kick in now, like on auto payment in the next week and like thousands of dollars. And I, I, I was, I was just, I was so stressed. I was in debt. Um, and I literally was on my knees and I was trying, basically saying to God, I said, you know, like, I don't know why you brought me to this place. I don't know why I'm here. I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I feel that you put this in my heart to be an artist and to do this and, and serve you in some way. But I'm having a hard time making ends meet. I can't make ends meet. I need you to basically step in at this point. And if I'm meant to go home, I've been asking, I had been asking for a long time, if this is not what I'm supposed to do, let me know. And I didn't get anything else that hit me that I should be doing instead. But I was literally brought to my knees and I said, you know what, I'm done, I'm done. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. So if this is where I'm supposed to be, you got to step in because I don't know what else to do. So. I'm going to give it all to you and you take care of it because I don't know what else to do. That afternoon, in the mail, I got three checks that covered all my bills coming up in the next month within five bucks. And I was beside myself. I said, you got to be kidding me. And I would, you know, I, I literally was like, so this is how it's going to be, huh? Full and complete surrender, huh? Okay, you got it. And from that point, from that moment on, and it was a Saturday morning and a Saturday evening that I'll never forget when I got those checks, that my life literally turned on a dime and it's never been the same since. I've never worried in the same way. I've never been stressed in the same way. I've never had the same kind of financial pressure in that very same way, given those circumstances. I've had, you know, uh, obstacles like all of us do. I've had situations, but how I handled it was completely different from that moment on. And I've resolved to just not stress and know that even if it's in the 11th hour, God will figure it out. He'll, he'll, I just got to remain true to him and trust him and he will not let me down and he hasn't. And it was, let me see, May. So it was three months after that, that I was confirmed to start working on The Chosen. Wow. 
And then that, about a month later, I was in Texas filming.